certain advancements in technology, sociology, and many, many other things. They call themselves the guardians of the secrets of the ages. And I can assure you folks, they are in complete control of all elements of our society, military, and government at this time. So it is essential that you learn these facts about them and their organization so that we can decide our future. Don't go away, folks. We've got to take a short break. I'll be right back right after this pause. cult of Mithra, the intercessor between man and the Persian divine power, or Muzd, was once an extremely widespread one, for it is the original cult of the sun. From its origins in Persia, the faith spread to Babylonia, Greece, and finally the Roman Empire, where it struggled against Christianity at the latter's inception. Christianity believes that it won with the decline of the material virtues of the Romans but there are people who worship the solar deity today and even London has its Mithra temple Mithra was said to give his worshippers success in this world as well as security and happiness in the next sound familiar Freemasons he was originally a genie the worldly representative of the invisible power which ruled the affairs of men. Later, and the cult probably has a history of over 6,000 years, he became thought of by his devotees as being not just one of the 28 genii, but the only one which mattered, and the only one who could cater for the wishes and needs of the people. Thus it was that the ancient Aryan worship of Ahura Mazda, the supreme being, was displaced by that of one of his representatives. Now one way, folks, you can tell who or which corporations or businesses or societies belong to these cults is to look at these names such as Saturn, Mazda, etc. Ahura Mazda, the supreme being, was displaced by that of one of his representatives, although archaeological research has produced little to give a clear picture of the rituals and beliefs of the Mistraists. A considerable amount of secret lore still survives in the East from India to Syria, which gives one a good idea of exactly how the members of the cult thought and just exactly what their magical ceremonies were. 
Three ritualistic objects are used by Mithraeus, the crown equivalent to the sun and power of the supernatural kind, the hammer or club symbolizing creative activity of mankind, and the bull which stands for nature, virility, increase. By the proper understanding of these objects and just exactly what they represent, Mithraeus have it that the ordinary man can transcend his environment, can become great or successful, or can achieve what he wants to do and enters a delightful afterlife. What must he give in exchange? Nothing but worship to the principle which presides over all destiny and control to the priests of the religion. Now let's regress just a moment and let me explain to you why the bull throughout the ancient world you see the symbology of the bull. Now you have to remember this history goes back 6,000 years, the first 2,000 of which looking back is the Christian era. Now remember this is the age of Pisces or the two fish. The 6,000 year period started in antiquity when the sun was in Taurus or the bull. That is the meaning of Baal or Baal the golden calf was the representation of the house of the sun or the age of the bull or Taurus. It was really the same old mystery religion, the worship of the unseen God of the universe represented by the sun which over the centuries and the millennia has become the worship of the intellect with the sun the representation of the light or Lucifer, the one who gave man the gift of intellect. Now after the age of Taurus came the goat or the ram and this was symbolized by the symbol of the goat or the goat of Mendes for in Mendes there was a temple erected to the worship of the mysteries and since the sun was in the house of the goat or the ram the object of the exoteric worship by the masses was the goat. When the sun passed into the house of Pisces or the two fishes the Christian era began. We are now on our way out of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. Once you understand that the ancient religion was a religion of the worship of the heavens then everything begins to come together. And when you understand that they ceased believing in an all-powerful unseen God or hidden God of the universe and became essentially pantheist, believing that everything is God, they call this nature or the natural way, then you can understand how man became to worship the intellect, the intellect, and the symbol which used to represent the unseen God of the universe came to represent the intellect, the use of which will bring man to the state of apotheosis where man himself will become God. And then you begin to look at all the things that are happening today and you see their symbology everywhere. Nowhere will you see it more prominently and the Looney Tune fringe element which call themselves ufologists, you will see that everything to do with the so-called UFO phenomena comes right out of the mystery schools. One reason, folks, for the loss of importance of the cult of Mithraeus, undoubtedly, is the admission was restricted to those who were thought worthy to receive the blessings which would come through the proper beliefs and use of the magical powers presided over by the Mithra priests. Christianity, for instance, was open to a far greater section of the population, even although the Christian mysteries were not accessible everywhere to all until relatively late in our history. 
At the same time, some of the Mithraic ceremonials were of such obvious emotional appeal that scholars are agreed that the purely ritualistic side of Christianity owes much to those of the sun god of the Persians, and if you've been listening to this program, you already know that that Christianity was actually merged with the religion of the worship of the sun into what is now known 